Hello and welcome to this session um, where I'll be talking about how you can use Apache Pino as part of your data pipelines for building rich external or site-facing analytics. A quick note about me, I am Chinmay Soman. I'm part of a stealth right now. But before this, I was leading the streaming group at Uber, whose mission was to build the next generation real-time analytics platform. I'm an active contributor to Apache Pino and also part of some other open source projects. So today I'll begin by discussing what exactly is site-facing analytics and why we need an underlying system that can support high throughput, low latency analytical queries. I'll introduce Apache Pino and talk about its high level architecture uh, and how it's optimized for such use cases. Next, I'll discuss some scenarios where maintaining the P99 latency SLA becomes non-trivial. And finally, how we can optimize our input data pipelines and our Pinot data layout to obtain predictable latency. So let's begin. What exactly is site-facing analytics? Um, well, we, we typically refer, uh, by this we typically refer to the analytical tools and solutions exposed directly to our end users or the audience of your company. One of the best use cases is the LinkedIn feed, feed ranking use case. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the LinkedIn news feed. To make sure the news feed is interesting, we need to ensure the users are not seeing the same thing again and again. In other words, for any given story, we need to know how many times has the user seen this in the last 14 days or so, which can be done with a SQL query, something like this. So at a high level, this might look straightforward, um, but keep in mind, this query needs to be executed for every active user, every time they visit the LinkedIn homepage, uh, which translates to multiple thousands of such OLAP queries executed on a huge database uh, of pretty much all the LinkedIn members. And each such query must execute pretty quickly in the order of milliseconds. Otherwise, it's going to lead to a terrible experience for our, for our users. Let's take another example, which is the uh, restaurant manager from Uber Eats. Uh, this is a tool that's given to restaurant owners across the globe to slice and dice their data from Uber Eats. So when you open the tool, you can see a view, something like this, where you can see sales metrics in a real time and historical fashion. You see missed orders or inaccurate orders, which is more real time and, and other information such as top selling items, menu feedback and, and so on. And now you can imagine to load this one view, to load uh, this view, we need to execute uh, multiple complex OLAP queries, all executing concurrently. Multiply this with all the restaurant owners across the globe leads to a lot of QPS to the underlying database. And again, all these queries must execute uh, in, in the order of milliseconds for a good experience for our users. So it is clear to build such rich analytics for external audience, we need an underlying analytical system that can ingest data from real time and historical sources and support uh, high throughput, low latency queries um, in, uh, in a reliable manner. Enter Apache Pino. For those who don't know, Apache Pino is a distributed OLAP store which can ingest data from a variety of sources such as Kafka, HDFS, S3, GCS, and so on, and make it available for querying in, in real time. Uh, at the heart of the system is a columnar store, and it also features a variety of smart indexing techniques and pre-aggregation techniques uh, for low latency. Uh, all these optimizations make it a great fit for a lot of analytical use cases, such as business metrics or dashboards uh, or the analytical application, which we saw with LinkedIn, or even things such as uh, real-time ad hoc exploration, anomaly detection, and, and so on. Pino is a mature product today, uh, and it's used in a lot of big data companies across the globe in production, as shown here on the right. 
and, and the usage uh, is rapidly increasing. Of course, no introduction is complete without uh, vanity metrics. So here you go. Um, some of the largest Pinot clusters can ingest data at a rate of upwards of a million events per second, support hundreds of thousands of queries per second, while still maintaining a low latency in the order of milliseconds. Okay, so now that all the buzzwords are out of the way, uh, let's get our hands dirty and see how Pinot looks like under the hood. So here's a high level architecture of Pinot. At the bottom of the diagram, you can see the data sources uh, where we get the raw data from. You can use Pinot as part of your real time pipelines where the data flows in through either Kafka, Kinesis, PopSub and so on. Uh, and, and in this case, Pinot will be ingesting the data one event at a time. You could also use Pinot as part of your batch pipeline where the raw data is sitting somewhere in HDFS or S3, and we run an ingestion job to bulk load that data into Pino. Uh, the system supports Lambda architecture. So the cool thing here is you can run both these pipelines for the same table, and it will be presented as one unified view to the user, which is pretty convenient. On the top right, we have the controller, which uses Apache Helix to coordinate different cluster operations, such as partitioning, replication, uh, load balancing, uh, instance allocation, and so on. And finally, on we have the data plane uh, consisting of brokers and servers. So servers will get the incoming data and organize it in a columnar format and make it available for local queries. Brokers will get the queries issued by users or applications and then do a distributed scatter gather to compute the final result. So let's take an example of a real time pipeline with Pinot to illustrate the flow of data. Here we have the Pinot controller, Pinot broker, four servers, and a Kafka topic with four partitions. And let's assume we want to set up a table to ingest from this topic. So the very first thing controller will do is to fetch the Kafka metadata, discover the four partitions, and decide that it needs to create four segments for each of these partitions. A segment here uh, refers to the unit of partitioning and replication in Pino. It basically refers to a chunk or subset of your data. So you'll have many segments for, for a given table. We'll look at the segment in detail in the next slide. You can see here that the controller has also assigned these segments to the four servers. It'll use Apache Helix to write this ideal state into the zookeeper, at which point the four servers will start uh, reading from Kafka uh, for the corresponding partition and creating a local segment. At some point, the segment will be, will be complete uh, and then the controller will create the next set of segments and so on. Uh, now with any good distributed system, we want to make sure our data is replicated. So let's set that up. Let's configure our table with a replication factor of two. The controller will read this config and make sure that every single segment is replicated on two distinct servers as shown here. So at this point, data is flowing from Kafka to all these servers in parallel. So now when the Pinot broker receives a, a query, uh, it will do a distributed scatter gather and contact all the servers responsible for this table. Uh, what it effectively does is, is to pass on this query to each such server each server will then locally execute this query for the corresponding segments from that table and return an intermediate response to the broker. The broker will do a final aggregation and then return the response back to the, back to the user. So you can see that this, this system, there's a good scale out design adopted by Pino. If you're ever running out of capacity or you want more throughput from your system, all you need to do is just add more machines uh, the controller will then allocate new segments onto the new machines um, and the broker will automatically discover these new segments. 
so as promised, let's take a little bit uh, deeper look into our Pino segment, which is really the secret sauce behind the low latency aspect of Pino. As I mentioned before, a segment is a chunk or subset of the data. Uh, so let's assume this is the, the figure on the left is raw data, some number of rows of raw data, which needs to be converted into one segment. Internally, the segment will organize this data in a column format, uh, which means all the, the country data will be grouped together, uh, all browser data will be grouped together and so on. As many of you might know already, this is great for executing analytical queries. For example, if you get a simple query, something like uh, count star where the country is US, all I need to do is process this one column uh, instead of all the rows from, from, the, table, from the segment. Uh, this obviously leads uh, to a good speed up and low latency. But what's more is Pino allows us to uh, add a variety of indexes on any of these dimensions. For example, I can add an inverted index uh, on the country dimension. So now instead of scanning the country column, I can just look up um, the, in, the exact entries corresponding to US and get an answer in, in a very fast manner. Similarly, I can add a sorted index uh, on, on, on the country column or even a star tree index. The star tree is a special sort of an index which allows us to maintain pre-aggregated values for like some combination of dimensions, for example, country and browser. So for this particular query, we can get the result uh, with using a, with a single lookup, almost like a key value store, which is incredibly fast. So these are just some of the examples of indexing techniques, um, but there are many others that you can use. For example, range index, text index, um, geospatial index, uh, bloom filters, and so on. We are constantly uh, adding these things. So all these optimizations um, allow us to execute queries on one segment in a really fast manner, which in turn lowers the poor server latency and uh, thus leads to a low latency across the, across the cluster. So let's shift gears a little bit um, and discuss things uh, when, when they go wrong, uh, especially with large scale deployments of Pinot. So for most Pino deployments, things will be running fine out of the box, but in, in large scale cases, your latency graph might look something like this. As you can see, your 50th percentile latencies are actually doing fine, somewhere between 50 to 100 milliseconds, but your P99th latency is actually quite bad. Uh, and in fact, at some point it starts timing out at 10 seconds. So let's take a look you know, why this could happen. So as I mentioned, uh, with large use cases, you might end up provisioning a lot of Pino servers. For example, in this case, is 1,000 servers. And every now and then, one of these servers might start executing, uh, might slow down. This could be because it, it's going undergoing some memory pressure, uh, is going through garbage collection, or has some intermittent CPU spikes. So this ends up lowering um, the overall latency across the cluster. More the number of servers, higher the probability of hitting such a server, and thus it might uh, increase your tail end latencies. Uh, in a similar vein, you might end up with a lot of uh, segments per server. So now each server has to do a lot of work to execute the local query. And, and please note, in this case, uh, it will not only increase the P99 latency, but latency is across the board. So what can we do about this? Um, the general approach for getting more predictable latency is to limit the query span or to limit the number of things we need to process to execute the query. So the two approaches we have here is reduce the number of servers processed to execute the query uh, and 
and the number two is uh, reduce number of segments processed uh, for doing this. So let's look at this uh, one by one. And please keep in mind, these approaches are complementary to each other. So for the first one, Pino provides a mechanism known as replica group. A replica group refers to a subset of servers which contain a complete copy of all the segments uh, for this table, for a given table. So for example, we can tune, we can configure this in our table config as shown on the top right. Here we have two replica groups with two server instances per group. When the Pino controller reads this config, it will make sure that each group has all the segments for the table. So now with this setup, when the Pino broker receives a query, it needs to query, it needs to send the query to only one of these two groups to get a final result. As you can, as you can, uh, as you notice, we have effectively reduced the number of servers to be processed by 50%. And this will drastically help in uh, improving your tail end latencies. Uh, for approach two, where we want to minimize the number of segments processed for executing query, we rely on data partitioning. And in this case, we need to pre-process the data before it can be ingested into Pino. So let's assume we want to set up a Pino table and we're going to execute a lot of queries where we filter on the client ID dimension, as uh, an example shown here. In this case, we can pre-process the raw data by using a partition function on client ID. For example, you can do client ID modulo four. Uh, we are effectively resharding the raw data into four partitions for each of these sources. And this can be done with your standard tools such as Flink or Spark or whatever you have in your stack. At this point, this sharded data can be ingested in Pino. And when we set up the table, we can specify the same partitioning function. So Pino is aware uh, of this strategy. With this config, uh, Pino will then track for every single segment what partition it belongs to. So now let's take a look how this helps on the query side. Uh, so when, when the Pino broker receives this query, it will retrieve the lookup value and apply the same partition function uh, and, and determine that I need to uh, qu query the partition one. In this case, let's assume partition one uh, is mapped to segment one. Therefore, the, the broker only needs to query one of these two servers to compute the final result. So with four partitions, we've effectively reduced uh, the query span in terms of segments by 75%, which is pretty big. Uh, and it, it, uh, this optimization helps greatly in reducing latencies across the board, uh, especially for large data sets. To wrap up uh, in this talk, we saw the high level architecture and the scale out design of Pino. We looked at the, the segment uh, architecture and the rich indexing support, which helps in getting low latency in addition to high throughput. And we also saw some powerful knobs uh, that Pino provides in order to optimize data layout and uh, therefore get more predictable latency. Uh, if you want to know more, please visit our official page at pino.apache.org. Uh, and this is our Twitter official Twitter handle. I've also given the link for our uh, Slack channel where you'll find most of us and we can answer questions online. With that, I'll, I'll conclude. Uh, thanks a lot for having me, and I look forward to the Q&A. Thank you.